Have you ever looked at a map and wondered why Africa seems smaller than it actually is? With a surface area larger than all continents except Asia, it's hard to believe that Africa is misrepresented. But it is. In fact, Africa is around 30% smaller than it should be. But why? Is it a simple miscalculation or something more sinister? We all know that maps have been used for centuries to navigate the world, but little do we know about the stories behind these ancient artifacts. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into the history and politics of map making, uncovering the truth about Africa's true size. From historical inaccuracies to modern day biases, we'll leave no stone unturned in our quest for answers. We'll journey back in time to ancient Egypt, where the Turin Papyrus map, a detailed plan of the city of Thebes, is one of the earliest maps on record. We'll explore the contributions of ancient Greeks who created detailed maps of the known world, including the Mediterranean region and parts of Europe and Asia. Join us as we unveil the hidden stories and secrets behind the lines and symbols on the maps we use today, and discover the truth behind Africa's true size in the fascinating world of cartography. Throughout history, maps have played an important role in promoting colonialism and white supremacy. Maps have been used as tools for oppression and exploitation by representing land and resources in a way that benefits colonizers. The use of maps during the age of European exploration and colonization is one example of this. Despite the presence of indigenous peoples, European cartographers frequently depicted the lands they encountered as empty or uninhabited. This served to legitimize the colonizers' claim to the land and the forced removal of the indigenous inhabitants. One of the biggest impacts maps have had on the world is colonialism. European explorers saw the continents south of theirs as inferior and thus subjected them to cruelty and racism. European colonizers viewed the indigenous peoples of Africa as inferior and savage, and they used this belief to justify their actions of conquest and domination. They believed that they were bringing civilization and progress to the continent, while in reality, they were exploiting and oppressing the local populations. One of the ways that colonialism was linked to racism was through the forced labor and exploitation of African people. European colonizers forced many Africans to work on farms, mines, and other economic ventures, often without pay. They were treated as little more than slaves, and many were subjected to brutal treatment and abuse. This was based on the belief that African people were inferior and not worthy of fair treatment. And it was a prime example of the racism that was inherent in the colonial system. Another way that colonialism was linked to racism was through the imposition of European culture and values on African societies. European colonizers sought to civilize the local populations by imposing their own language, religion, and customs on them. This was done in an attempt to make them more civilized and developed. But it was often done in a way that was both condescending and disrespectful of local cultures. This was based on the belief that European culture was superior to that of Africa, and it was another example of the racism that was inherent in the colonial system. Colonialism in Africa was a period of European exploration, conquest, and domination of the continent that had a significant impact on the lives of millions of people. One of the most significant effects of colonialism was the widespread racism that it perpetuated, which was linked to forced labor, exploitation, and the imposition of European culture and values on African societies. This racism was based on the belief that African people were inferior and not worthy of fair treatment. The Mercator Projection, a tool used for nautical navigation that eventually became the world's most widely recognized map influences many people's perceptions of the Earth. Because the vast majority of us no longer use paper maps to chart our course across the ocean, critics of the Mercator Projection argue that its continued use gives users a distorted sense of the true size of countries, particularly in the case of the African continent. While the Mercator projection is useful for navigation, it grossly overestimates the size of various regions. While better projections have replaced it, 
it is still in use in some unexpected places. The Mercator projection is not the most popular because it is necessarily the best. Its popularity stems from a historical legacy that dates back to the 16th century, when maps were essential tools for ocean navigation. The spacing between latitude lines aided sailors in navigating routes that appeared to be straight lines on paper. The Mercator projection's mathematical symmetry explains the size disparities between Greenland and Africa, which is the most common complaint among critics. Furthermore, there is no reason to believe that when Gerardus Mercator mapped out Greenland and Africa, he had a racist vision. For starters, Greenland is neither a country with a large European population nor a center of Western civilization. Every map projection has advantages and disadvantages. The Mercator projection is accurate in terms of angles. Constant compass heading lines appear as straight lines on the map. It does, however, come at a cost. The Mercator's biggest flaw is its inaccuracy with regard to size. In this case, size does matter. The issue isn't just that the Mercator projection depicts the world incorrectly, though it does. The Mercator projection is especially contentious because it makes Europe and the United States appear much larger than they are, giving them more prominence. Similarly, it devalues Africa, South or Central America, and Asia, with the exception of Russia. Compare Europe and the United States sizes under the Mercator projection to their sizes under another very important projection known as the Gall-Peters projection. Gall Peters is an equal area projection, which means that the area of each region on the map is accurately preserved. With Gall Peters, Africa takes center stage, with Europe occupying a minor role. In the 1970s, there was a push to make Gall Peters the standard map, a less deceptive replacement for Mercator. Clearly, it never caught on. The Gall Peters map was designed to increase ideological fairness rather than to accurately depict world geography. Arno Peters believed that the size of a country on a map is the first sign of its importance. The foundation of my world history is fairness to all peoples. Peters never explained why he came up with this theory. Peters never explained why creating equally projected geographic landmasses contributes to scientific inquiry the goal of which is unbiased observation rather than fairness. The Gall-Peters projection is useless and does not accurately reflect objective reality. Another geographer named Stuart MacArthur created an atlas with north and south flipped in 1979. This map, later dubbed the MacArthur Universal Corrective Map, demonstrates how our assumptions about north and south are affected by where we are. It makes sense for those in the Southern Hemisphere to perceive the world as being upside down in comparison to the rest of us. The use of South Up map orientation to make a political statement dates back to the early 1900s. Having students consider the Northern Hemisphere's privileged position on most world maps can help students confront their more general potential for culturally biased perceptions. According to research, the north-south positions on maps have psychological consequences. In general, the north is associated with wealthier people, more expensive real estate, and higher altitude, whereas the south is associated with poverty, lower prices, and lower altitude, that is, the north-south bias. When participants were shown maps oriented south up, the north-south bias vanished. The MacArthur map is divided into four quadrants, the physical, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual. Each quadrant represents a different type of talent or strength and can be used to identify areas of potential growth and development. For example, someone who is strong in the physical quadrant might excel in sports or physical activities, while someone who is strong in the intellectual quadrant might excel in academics or problem solving. By understanding and utilizing their strengths and talents in the MacArthur map, individuals in Africa can build self-esteem and confidence. This can be particularly important for people who may have grown up in a culture where they were not encouraged or supported in developing their talents and abilities. By identifying and developing their strengths, they can begin to see themselves in a new light and realize that they have something valuable to offer the world. 
In addition to helping individuals build self-esteem and confidence, the MacArthur Map can also be used by organizations to identify and develop the strengths of their employees. By understanding the unique talents and abilities of each employee, organizations can create more effective teams and better utilize the skills of their workforce. This can lead to increased productivity, job satisfaction, and overall success for the organization. In conclusion, the MacArthur Map can be a valuable tool for individuals and organizations in Africa to identify and develop their unique strengths and talents. By understanding and utilizing their strengths, they can build self-esteem and confidence and better understand and utilize their unique abilities, leading to personal and professional success. All we've been trying to express in this video is that perception has a lot to do with how people position themselves in the world. Even though the Mercado projection is useful in navigation, it paints a picture of the world that is factually false since the actual land masses of continents closer to the equator appear one third of their actual sizes, and we need to start becoming more geographically literate, which gives us an accurate perspective about the world we live in. What did you guys make of the video? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching as always, and before you go, please hit the like button and also subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos.